welcome to today's Nature Nugget. Um, today, instead of talking about a specific group of animal, we are going to be talking about a specific type of habitat. Um, so it will be a series of videos, just like I've done before. And today we are talking about um, Maine's coastal habitat. And I think in this first video, we're going to talk a little bit um, about the tide and the tidal zones and some of the animals that can be found there, as well as different types of shells. So first things first, um, Maine has a very rocky coast. So most of um, the coastal habitat along Maine is, is rocky coast. There are some sandy beaches um, and there are other types of habitats. There's like, you know, the kelp beds, um, mud flats, but primarily we're gonna look at some of the things we would find in rockier areas. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about were the tidal zones. Um, so in case you guys don't know, kiddos, the tide currents are created by the moon's gravitational pull. So as the moon rotates around the earth, um, its gravity pulls the ocean waters towards one side. And so that creates the tidal ranges. So we have what's called high tide, where um, the water comes way up to shore, and we have lower tide, where the water kind of recedes for a time. So if you have ever been to a sandy beach, um, and maybe you start, it, the day starts off at a, at a low tide, or that's when you go, um, and you set all your, your beach shell out, or your lawn chair, and then a few hours later, you notice that the water is closer and closer and you have to move. So that's due to the tides. So that creates a very interesting habitat because that means in this tidal zone, so this area where the water level kind of fluctuates, um, depending on where an animal situates itself in the tidal zone, kind of depends on what they're adapted to. A lot of these animals in the middle, they have to adapt to both very dry conditions and also very wet conditions as well as having to deal with the motion and pull of the waves as they come in and out during high tide. So we have the super tidal zone. So it's right above where um, the waves would hit, so where, right above the highest water line. And then you have this inner tidal area, right? And so here at the very top, animals that are more adapted to um, drier habitat but would need a little bit of water hang out here right and then as you go further down these animals become more and more adapted to having greater time in the water so one of the most common critters that you would see in an intertidal zone be barnacles and barnacles have there's this is like the leftover the shell of the barnacle basically so this is no longer alive obviously um, inside, they would, ha would have a little soft body. And during low tide, this outer shell, they actually close that up. And that helps hold in moisture, hold in water so that they don't dry out. And then when the tide comes in, um, it opens back up. And there's these little um, cilia-like structures. Think of like a, I guess like a sea anemone, kind of, kind of. Um, they come out and they help, they filter feed, so they get nutrients from the water. And that's another really important thing about um, tidal zones and waves. As the waves come in, they're bringing in nutrients from other areas. So a lot of animals who live in the intertidal zone uh, use that nutrients to feed off of. So barnacle is probably, you've definitely seen this. And then I also want to show you guys these. You'll also find these guys left behind at low tide. The waves come in and they bring in seaweed and other plants. And this is this looks kind of kind of icky, but if you're actually to if you were exploring a coastal area and were to kind of pick your way through the seaweed, you'd probably find all sorts of critters because this is an excellent uh, another excellent source of nutrients and also prov provides habitat and shelter for um, little ocean critters and tidal critters to survive in. So that's just a cool thing. All right. So if you guys 
like to go to the beach, which I definitely do, one really cool thing to do is if you go at low tide, you can see what are called tidal pools. So um, at high tide, the water comes in, and then low tide, the water recedes. But sometimes there's little like indentions in the sand or the rocks, and some of the water gets left behind. And um, a lot of animals and wildlife use those puddles of water to survive in. So those are a cool thing to kind of explore. It's a good way to see um, tidal animals. Another cool thing that I personally like is to go shell collecting. We've all seen shells, right? So usually we're seeing the shell that's left behind, but there are, or were at one point, animals that lived in here. We can find different types of shells. So I wanted to talk to you guys about two different types of shells that we'll see. One is called univalve, and the other is called bivalve. All right. So uni means one. So think of like a unicycle. It has one wheel. Bi means two. So think of like a bicycle. There's two wheels. So a creature with a univalve that y'all might be familiar with is the moon snail. Um, there you go. This big guy right here. That is a moon snail. It's probably one of the bigger snails you'll see. And the cool thing about them is that they are actually predators. So they prey on mollusks, which we'll get to later. So um, clams and other similar species. And they have... Um, they can drill their way into the sh into the shell. So their mouth part, called a radial, it has like several teeth on it. And if you see, these are all different uh, clams and mollusks that they all have a little hole that looks like it was cleanly drilled in there. That's from the moon snail. So they drill this little hole and then they suck out the inside and they feed on what's inside. So that's pretty cool. Another one you'll probably see a lot are the periwinkles, right here, rough periwinkle. And those are not predators. Those, um, they have kind of a scraping tongue that they use to scrape off algae. And like I was telling you guys, a lot of these intertidal creature creatures have to have an adaptation to deal with the water when it comes in and then also being exposed to the air when the water leaves. So in the case of the periwinkle, their shell has a little part that kind of closes the mouth of their shell. So imagine here's, here's the mouth, right? They'd have a little flap that closes that, and that traps in the water so that they don't dry out. But when that's closed, the snail can't breathe. So they, they close that, and they can stay up to five minutes without breathing, and then they have to open back up again, take a breath and close back up. So cool little adaptation. All right, bivalve species are ones that have two shells. So think clams, think scallops, think um, oysters. Those are, I'm gonna show you guys the picture here. Like here. So you kind of have like a top and a bottom. Most of these species are, uh, or all these species are mollusks. Um, and that's a type of basically a group of animals that are all um, live in the ocean. Well, some of them live in fresh water. Most of what we're familiar with is in salt water, though. And they have these outer shells, right? And they, ha they have bilateral symmetry. That means that. Um, at one point, they're, they're symmetrical. So this side is symmetrical with this side. And bilateral means that you could draw this line and cut it into two sides that look the same. So two sides that were symmetrical. Um, so inside this bilateral shell, they have a soft body. And usually that body has, you know, not very many organs. Usually an organ has uh, several functions. And they have this body, this shell to protect that soft body. And 
Um, not all mollusks, mollusks though, have shells. So there's a group called cephalopods. So think of octopus and squids. Um, those are considered mollusks as well, but they don't have a shell. And let me show you guys this one. Let's start here. So this right here, this is a species of mollusk. This is an oyster. And the reason I want to talk about oysters are really important because um, they're filter feeders and they are actually really, really powerful filters. So they help clear, keep water clear. Basically, they can filter, I think it's up to five liters of water a day, which is quite a bit. So if you had a tank full of oysters with a bunch of dirty water, and then you had a tank full of just dirty water, at the end of the day, the oyster water tank would be much clearer because oysters fill out, um, filter out a lot of that debris. All right, and I wanted to show you guys last bit. Ooh, actually, first, here's some other just examples of different mollusks we would find, different bivalves. All right, I think this one right here, this razor, this razor clam, that's pretty cool. All right, I want to show you guys here. You can even test yourselves. Combination of bivalves and univalves that you might find on the beach which are pretty cool so we've talked a little bit about uh maine's coastal habitat we've talked about tidal zones and we've talked about some of the animals that we might find in those titles tidal zones and also different types of shells so i will end this video here and next video i think i'm going to talk about horseshoe crabs so see you guys in a few minutes